Empathy is extremely important for a successful class. And one of the reasons I love music so much is that it's extraordinarily good at fostering empathy. So today we're going to look at some ways in which we can foster empathy in the classroom and some examples of songs that can go with that. Hi, I'm Vicky Boss, educator, professional developer and empathetic human being. Today we're going to look at some activities for building and developing empathy within your classroom, why they're important, what you can do for it and what songs you can use to go along with that or perhaps to introduce it. One of the key aspects of empathy is putting yourself in other people's shoes. To that end, hypotheticals are a great way of introducing empathy to a class. Here's a conundrum, here's a difficult situation, what would you do if? There are lots and lots of songs that have conundrums or problems to be solved. So I would choose one of them, something like the clashes, should I stay or should I go now, would be ideal. You present them with the song, the situation, you role play it a little bit and you decide what would you do in this situation. Put yourself in somebody else's shoes. Another crucial element of empathy building is being able to identify emotions. Songs are really good for this because you can play a song and you can ask students, well, what is the singer feeling here? And then you can extend that by saying, what makes you feel that way? So again, getting students to put themselves in somebody else's position to say, well, the singer is feeling this and I think they're feeling this because I can see the facial expressions, I can hear the tone of voice, I can see the words that they are singing and that makes me realise that they're probably sad or angry or exultantly happy. And then identifying within themselves what makes you feel that way. So you can, there's a whole range, I mean, there's a thousand billion songs out there with different kinds of emotions. And you can do everything from Pharrell's happy, because I'm happy, which is pretty easy to identify, <laughs> uh, to songs that are, you know, less happy, I suppose. So singing something more complex like, I am beautiful in every single way really identifying the, the whole gamut of emotions that's going on in that song. Everything from feeling ashamed and insecure and embarrassed to then feeling proud and confident and asking students to identify what makes them feel that way. Kindness is another crucial element of empathy. So making time in your class to plan for kindness. Asking students, how can we be kinder in our class, in our school, in our community, etc.? And of course, again, here, there are so many songs about being kind to other people. There are, there are, you know, big ballad type ones like John Lennon's Imagine All the People, Living Life in Peace. It's great. Um, to ones that are maybe just, you know, a bit more actually practical. Put a little love in your heart. A little old school. I'm a little old school today. Yeah, so a bit of Annie Lennox. Uh, Think of your fellow man. Lend him a helping hand. Put a little love in your heart. And, it, you know, thinking of actual practical ways that you can do that. Something that often gets overlooked in empathy building is practicing listening to people's problems rather than offering unsolicited advice or trying to solve the problem or even laughing at people's problems or trying to cheer them up or jolly them out of it saying, ah, oh, don't worry, you'll be fine. Actually practicing listening when somebody is telling you that they're having a difficult time. So eliciting from my class, what are some things phrases, some words, some things that we can say when somebody is telling us a problem that show that we care, that we're here, that we're listening, not that we think we have a way to solve their problem or we think they should just get over it somehow or don't worry, I'll, I'll take you out and we'll have a fun night and you'll be fine. So there's lots of great songs, of course, with, you know, singers singing about problems that they're having, something really emotional. I'm thinking something like uh, Natalie Imbruglia's Torn. Nothing's right, I'm torn. I'm all out of faith. This is how I feel. And asking students to role play the situation and say, what is the singer feeling? And how do I, as 
their friend listen to them? How do I respond to them without trying to solve their problem? Trying to elicit that beautiful, lovely, caring language that shows I'm here, I'm listening. I don't have the answers, but I'm a shoulder to cry on. The final activity that I would use to build empathy in the classroom is creating motivational messages. These can be done in the form of letters, posters, uh, video messages, uh, memes, blog posts, whatever it is that your class is into, getting them to create motivational messages for each other. So you can do whatever you put your mind to, etc. And there are lots of songs that you can use here for inspiration, you know, Shakira's Oh, 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 try everything comes to mind. Try everything and sending those messages to each other as a class to keep each other lifted and built up. So why do we want to do all of this empathy building? Well, empathy is really, really important for classroom dynamics. It helps the students to develop rapport with you as the teacher and with each other. It helps them to support each other in their learning. They feel more confident and more comfortable and therefore they become more effective learners because they take more risks and they're not afraid to make mistakes because they know that the people around them are empathetic and supportive. This in turn means, of course, that they're more likely to participate in any activities that you put in front of them. They're not going to feel like other people will be laughing at them. They're far more likely to take feedback and act upon it. And they're far more likely to give positive, encouraging feedback to each other. The more empathy that you can develop in your classroom, the easier your job becomes. However, we all know that, especially with teenagers, for example, introducing an empathy class explicitly can be a little bit daunting, embarrassing, or something that they roll their eyes at, which is why I like to use songs. Introducing ideas through music, through something that they can relate to or enjoy or have fun with, so that it's not such an overt, okay, let's do an empathy class today, everybody. So if you're ready to put a little empathy in your classroom, visit www.teachinginharmony.com and get some lesson plans and ideas and activities for introducing, developing and building empathy with your students and improving their learning experience.